Hey, it's Andy Hall, and we're backstage at Music as a Weapon 5. Hard to believe this is the fifth incarnation of this tour, and it's become quite high profile. Disturbed Corn 7 Dust, and in this moment, my special guest is Disturbed Guitarist Dan Donegan. Welcome back to town. Uh, good to be back. Good to be back. You guys are just getting this thing started. This is show number two, and I hear last night went real well. It went awesome. It felt good. To, we were off for a month for the holidays and stuff, so to get back on stage, and this lineup is just killer lineup so uh, a lot of energy obviously you know corn being around forever and big you know pioneers of what they do and, and the energy that seven dust brings as well and you know, in this moment it's throwing down too so it's uh, definitely a lot of energy going on how do you hook something like this up where you get such high profile acts on a on a tour like this because the music as a weapon is by name disturbed tour well you know, we've been trying to brand that tour for, for a long time now and trying to find bands that we're fans of, bands that we feel add a lot of value to the tour. And, and over the years, uh, you know, we've done that. And um, earlier in last summer when uh, Korn was out on the Mayhem tour, they uh, they passed through town, through Chicago. And um, we after the show, we had gone up on Jonathan Davis's bus and, and we're just, uh, David was up there too, talking to him and saying, you know, we really need to team up again. It's been a while. And so we've done OzFest with them before, and we did the Pop Sucks tour, which was their tour uh, back in, I don't know, maybe maybe 2003 or something like that. And, you know, we both realized the, the, the value that we bring together. And, um, you know, with this day and age and, and the economy, how tough it is, you it's better to, for, for bands like us to team up and to give the kids – you know, more bang for their buck. And, uh, you know, we're on the same page. So let's, you know, let's just do this. Why go out separately when we could come together and just join forces? Some of these kids aren't kids anymore, Dan. You know, back when you guys got started, what was it, 11, 12 years ago, the sickness came out. And if you think about it, somebody that was uh, in, the, in their early 20s at that point is now in their early 30s. That's pretty mind-blowing. Yeah, you know, but we still live like kids. <laughs> you know, and it yeah. gives them a chance to come out and, you know, get away from work or school or whatever they do in their everyday life and to have their escape and come here and let loose have a good time it's been a hell of a road for disturbed uh you know i mentioned 11 12 years whatever it's been since the sickness came out in fact i was thinking back on the air a few days ago uh first time i ever saw disturbed was a small club show at a place called harry mary's here in des moines about 12 years ago i think it was yeah i remember that place <laughs> yeah and uh what was that band there was another local band that we played with 35 uh, 35 yeah Remember that band too? Um, yeah, it was cool. I just I remember uh, hearing about the club before we came here. We had some friends that had passed through uh, Des Moines and played there before, but I, I remember it pretty clearly. But uh, to get back to my original point, uh, here you are. Uh, how many albums in now? Asylum is your fifth album. Yep, yep. five albums in already. Uh, pretty amazing, uh, considering the road you guys have been on. And another thing to mention about Disturbed too that's it's impressive is the fact that you know you see so many bands come out and really punch everybody in the face with their debut album and they fail to follow it up you guys have had absolutely no problem with that in fact you've really grown your audience over the years well you know there's there's no secret formula to it other than just staying true to yourselves and and us being um you know a band that's that's trying to evolve and pushing each other you know it's it's we can't go out there and second guess what it is that we do we just know that when we get together and the ideas are, are coming out and flowing and we're just trying to evolve the sound that uh you know whatever it does for us you know we're just fortunate that it connects in a big way with the fans you know their their subject matter and the lyrics are are, are deeper than maybe some other bands care to write about and people find that connection and something they could relate to how do you push yourself musically as a guitarist? I know most guitarists are uh, perfectionists, and uh, you're always looking for that uh, that next step up. What's what's the next step up for you? Um, I mean, we're always just musically just trying to make sure. It gets more challenging each time because the more and more songs we write, and we've probably written 80, 90 songs or whatever it's been, uh, to try to make sure that every song has its own identity and its own vibe and trying not to rehash old ideas. So it's... Uh, it's a matter of when me and Mike get together, we just try to throw down different beats and just different ideas and just set a different vibe each time. So and we love that challenge. I, I definitely wouldn't want to sit there and just try to recreate Down With The Sickness over and over just because it worked so good the first time. That yeah. song's great and it is what it is and it, it put us on the, on the map. But uh, 
you know, we're always going to push each other just to try to, to continue to evolve. That said, you still have a lot of fun playing songs like that when you would play live shows. You don't really get sick of it, do you? You know, I always thought, you know, before we got to this level, I thought, oh, God, is that, how's it going to be if we have to play these songs the rest of our lives? And realistically, I love to play them because of the, the reaction we get when we, when, especially down with sickness, when Mike starts that drum beat and the crowd hears it and identifies it and the roar of the crowd, it injects that life into it again for me. So it's easy enough you know, to go up there and play it because you know it's a highlight of the show and it gets the adrenaline, you know, going even more. You know, it's definitely not a song that I'll sit, you know, in my bedroom at home and just play over and over. <laughs> but, you know, like I said, I still, I love playing all of our songs. I really, there's not really one that I, I don't, you know, that I dread having to play anymore. So, it's, you know, we know that the whole album, The Sickness, was, you know, being our first album and, and, and the, the success that it had and how much it connected with people. You know, it's always good to see that reaction when we do Stupefy or The Game and all those songs as well, too. Um, just it keeps it keeps it exciting for us. Are there things you can do as a musician to keep those songs a little more fresh? Are there changes you make to the song every so often? Yeah, we've definitely, we've had some subtle, you know, live versions of it. You know, we might change it up or maybe a little bit of a crowd moment here or there. And, um, you yeah, know, so, yeah, we definitely try to, you, you know, I guess bring out certain accents in the songs. We we did things before where we did down with the sickness where at the beginning right before is a little monkey noise or whatever you want to call it, you know, <laughs> where we would just stop and right at the pause just, you know, kill the lights and just have the crowd do it and just kind of tease them. And we, we did you know, a few things like that just to kind of, you know, spice it up and change it up for us. What are some of your favorite songs on Asylum? There's so many great songs on this album. Um... God, they're just it's impossible to just to single out you know any certain song because they are so personal to all of us but um i guess the unfortunate thing is you know when, when we don't have as long of a set to do on a tour like this because we don't have the time with four bands on here um there's a lot of times there's songs we don't get to play you know so i, I think even you know, the further along we get in our career, there's songs that we've written and recorded and we've even off the last album, Indestructible, there's songs that we never really had a chance to play live yet just because we'd have to have a three-hour set be, to be able to do some of that. Um, but I look forward to hopefully someday being able to play um, songs like The Infection and, and Warrior. I mean, obviously we're, we've been playing the first two singles, uh, Another Way to Die and, and um, The Animal. But I, I, we'll be in the dressing room just warming up and stuff, and then a lot of times I, I get around to playing The Infection and Warrior and and um, Never Again, just some of the more energetic tracks. and that. So hopefully someday we'll have a long enough set again to be able to, to try some of those out live as well. That is the blessing and the curse, kids, of uh, being such a successful rock act is the fact that you really do only have so much time up on stage. As much as we'd like Dan and the rest of the guys in Disturb to play for four hours, that's simply not the case at these shows, but uh, you do what you can for the fans. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, like I said, ho hopefully on a, in different circumstances, if we're out doing a different run, we'll be able to kind of pull out some of those tracks and try other things too, but we also know that the fans that are paying to come out and see it are going to want to hear those certain hit songs that they're more familiar with. And uh, like I said, it also makes it exciting for us to play because that, if that's going to get them energized, then it, you know, it translates into the way we perform then. This is how we make a happier planet Earth. You hear that? Dan Donegan, my special guest from Disturbed, thanks for having me back here, man. Thank you. Have a great show tonight. Backstage with Disturbed, it's Andy Hall for Laser 103.3.